news. Welcome back for our continual odyssey of existentialist aesthetics. This is James Comey, half assed reporter, and we are on the Upper East Side. Special shout out to our friends in the Austrian Tyrol, Melbourne, and as always, Boise, Idaho. We're going to run in here to Skarstadt, 19 East 64th Street, and we're going to try to get some pictures of George Kondo paintings and works on paper before they close. Stay tuned. Circular Head Composition, 2019, Acrylic, Metallic, and Oil Paint on Linen, 74 by 68 inches. Well, I was uh, introduced to George probably back in the early 80s by uh, another uh, interesting painter, Don Betchler, and uh, this is back during the rise of the East Village scene, so we got together at a place called the Red Bar. I think it was Second Avenue and Sixth Street, and uh, kind of hung out a little bit, had a beer or two. their selfies here. Well, <laughs> kind of going out of uh, sequence with this. I went right upstairs to the main gallery and they've got some uh, huge paintings. Are you guys fans of George? <laughs> this is titled Fashion Model, yeah. 2019, and this is a suite of large paintings. This is 132 by 120, so that's uh, about 11 by 10 feet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> talking about my, my introduction to George, uh, so he was pretty friendly with Don, and uh, well, I guess he was even sleeping. He was kind of couch surfing in the East Village at the time, and uh, was sleeping on Don's couch for a while, and Don thought to himself, my God, <laughs> Maybe we should find someplace else for this to go. So Don recommended that uh, George meet some of his German friends. Don had been doing some studies and things in Germany. This is a nice piece. This is titled Portrait and Head. So uh, Don helped recommend George to his group of friends, I believe, they were in Dusseldorf, and uh, George went over there, and uh, well, George is a very urbane, interesting, funny guy, and he also uh, is a musician, and I understand plays a pretty wicked guitar, and so he was a, he was kind of a hit, and I guess there was a group in Germany at the time this could be apocryphal, but I believe it was the Molheimer Freiheit group. I believe they're in Dusseldorf. Anyway, they sort of uh, took up George and uh, started introducing him to some people. And as I understand it, through 
those connections, he was able to get hooked up with Bruno Bischoff Burger, which was and probably is still one of the most influential art galleries in Europe. And the rest is history. It's a very impressive suite of paintings. It's just titled Portrait Composition. Portrait Head Composition 2019, Acrylic and Metallic Paint and Pigment Stick on Linen. Well, I always just like George because he's a, uh, he's a good painter. He's a kind of a, you know, down and dirty, grunge around, scrape around, dig around, slime around painter. And uh, I always like that. I like the, uh, the feel. Also, I would recommend uh, looking at a, uh, an interview of George that's on YouTube. I think it was Louisiana TV, something like that. And uh, George spends a uh, considerable amount of time talking about his ideas, and in certain ways they relate to the show because he talks a lot about his drawing practice and talking about how much he uh, considers the paintings as kind of a continuation of his drawing and you can't really tell the difference where the drawing ends and the painting begins. Although with uh, yeah, something like this, I'm looking at this and thinking, uh, he's got a lot of things mixed in here and uh, yeah, it gives him a kind of a strange surface. Let's look at some more paintings. Your suite of paintings. This is Linear Portrait 1, 2019, oil on linen, 58 by 56 inches. And uh, okay, we got getting very graphic and draftsmanly or draftspersonly here. If you're interested, you can go back in the files. I got a uh, report of George's show at the New Museum. I believe it was curated by Laura Hoffman Oh, this is probably 2011, 2010, something like that. And, uh, well, it was a wonderful uh, retrospective and kind of covered a lot of his various periods. Uh, okay, so, you know, George might talk about himself as a uh, drafts person, but I think he's also got a pretty good, uh, pretty good color sense. I kind of like the way that this piece is tinted towards the yellow side of the spectrum, almost like you're looking at an old uh, faded photograph. This is titled Linear Portrait 3. Well, so George came back from Europe and uh, gosh, I think he was picked up pr pretty soon by Pace. I remember seeing a huge show of his work, I think at their Green Street space. And uh, I think a lot of these pieces were kind of riffing on album covers. So he was uh, paying homage to some of his musical heroes. Okay, I like the uh, 
the variation. He's doing some flat palette knife uh, scraping, then he's kind of building up little chunks here and there. He also talks about how important um, kind of sliding back and forth between different historical or uh, aesthetic sensibilities are for him. So he's, uh, in a certain way, he's kind of melding 1908-1910 Cubism with 1964 Mad Magazine illustrations, uh, throwing in a little action painting, uh, skimming in some uh, Bryce Martin minimalism, kind of uh, mushing it all together and then uh, throwing it out on the canvas and seeing what turns up. And that right there is almost a direct riff on a Picasso, a little profile face. Well, I, uh, I'm taking this kind of out of sequence. They've got a lot of uh, large drawings downstairs that we'll get to after we look at the paintings. These are all part of a series titled Painting to the Edge. And these are oil and pigment stick on linen. And we say it's pigment stick, I wonder if that's oil stick, it kind of looks like it. And uh, yeah, I like the way that he's scraped in these these white lines. You know, it really is a, uh, he's a good draftsman and uh, he knows how to activate a space with a few lines. Also, 82 by 64 inches. So maybe some of the most minimal pieces of George's that I've seen. I think also, you know, I don't know that much about his studio practice. So I have no idea if he's got a uh, staff of assistants working for him, but uh, I don't know, it always seems like there's one of, the, one of the things that I appreciate is it always seems like there's a very personal touch with the work. This is titled The Consequence of Random Perception, I believe. This is 84 by 168. And uh, yeah, this whole series kind of uh, is an example of what I was talking about, his, of his uh, sense of humor and also uh, kind of focusing in on a a motif or an idea and uh, playing around with it as long as they can and uh, having some fun. Also, uh, you know, look at this from the side so you can get an idea of some of the um, various qualities of the paint. Also, there's a certain amount of erasure going on here.
was titled Silence. Well, I was going to talk a little bit about George's influence from cartoons and comic books. And uh, as I say in the little interview that he has that's on YouTube, uh, he talks about how important that was for him. And uh, I was thinking you can look through some of the the other paintings and see certain sections that are <laughs> influenced by various people. One of the people that I can sort of pick out is this mad magazine artist named Don Martin. I think that was his name. And, uh, well, <laughs> he always seemed to have the uh, stupidest looking characters doing stupid things. My favorite mad magazine artist was always Mort Drucker. I thought he was a uh, kind of a master draftsman. This is titled The Heart Attack, 68 by 74. I was actually uh, Googling Mad Magazine and looking at some of the articles in the a YouTube video, I think it was recorded by 60 Minutes or something like that. Oh, there we got it all. Goofy eyes. And I think it was Morley Safer was, this is from maybe the early mid 80s, Morley Safer was going around talking to the, the guys that uh, had been working at Mad Magazine for years. Anyway, in the last 20 or 30 seconds of this report, they kind of walked down the hallways at the office where Mad Magazine had been, and uh, you see this guy walk across the hall, and it's he looks back, and it's Thomas Noskowski, who was a uh, an editor at Mad Magazine for years. Okay, now we're going to go downstairs and take a look at the drawings just notified that they're going to close down in five minutes, so we're going to basically trot through the drawing part of the show. It's called Willie the Butler 2019. Gesso acrylic wax crayon and ink on paper. And, uh, okay, we're going to keep moving. He had a wonderful selection of drawings at the uh, retrospective at the New Museum titled Subterranean Nudes. It's like 78 by 51. So these are big drawings. And again, I love the way that he's mixing all this together. So we've got graphite, charcoal, ink, crayon, oil stick, gesso, acrylic, Multiple figure composition. <laughs> it's even got a, uh, it's like a goofy cat. Male and female figure composition 2019. Uh, you know, a lot of people also talk about the, uh, you can have either color or you can have drawing. I guess it's an old classic Italian idea. I think in certain ways George proves that you can also do drawing with color. Female nude composition 2019. Submerged figure 2019. Also, I like the way that uh, George kind of leaves open spaces and then has more congested areas. Okay, we're gonna run back into this little room and get the sweep around the last series of drawings. Okay, well, these are all really sweet. I'm not even gonna give you the titles, but I think that this is... Uh, wax crayon on paper, and these are 30 by 22 inches, 2019. Okay, 
See a wonderful color there. And I would have to say that, you know, in a lot of ways I've talked about uh, the trans avant-garde neo-expressionism coming into New York and how there was a uh, painting jihad that was kind of pitched by the uh, people who were around October magazine. And I think in a certain way, George, although he spent a lot of that time in Europe or some of that time in Europe, would be a kind of a uh, American representative of that kind of the neo-expressionism. This is a very nice piece. Calling this clown composition. Wonderful color stuff. Okay, so we can do so stuff with limited palettes as well. Okay. I'm going to post a link to an article I wrote on George in relationship to Kitsch and some other reports on his work below, so check those out. James Com reporting on George Kondo, paintings and works on paper. That's Skarstadt here on 64th Street. You can like this, share, recommend it to your friends, and you can subscribe. And you can leave all your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And as always in the 15 years that we've been doing this, we only ask you to say, thank you, Kate. <laughs>